Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We're starting off our roster with Patek Philippe batting lead off. We've got the Calatrava 6119G, a 2021 launch. It is the latest generation of the long running hobnail bezel Calatrava and it's just rife with fun features. 8.5 millimeters thick, 39 millimeters in diameter in white gold. We have a double row pyramid style hobnail. We've got a dial that includes little cabochon white gold indices outboard of faceted white gold dart style indices. We have triple faceted Dauphine style hands and this lovely anthracite satination running from top to bottom. The watch of course features a latest generation movement. You can see this one as the caliber 3255. So manual wind, two barrels, 65 hour power reserve, anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, free sprung, six position adjusted, gyromax style balance. Beautiful architecture. Architecture is the size, shape, and relative positioning proportioning of the pieces in relation to each other. Finishing is how those pieces are decorated. So there are two different things. You could see that we have these broad stripes that are intriguingly large. And as you can see, there's quite a shading gradient across their surfaces. Barrel bridge one, barrel bridge two. We have this lovely floating train bridge in the center. It looks like these two barrels are actually operating in parallel rather than series, which creates a lot of torque for the escapement and really keeps it quite robust. That, that is when you have a desire for outstanding timekeeping in the meat of the power band. You use barrels in parallel to increase force, whereas barrels in series tend to increase power reserve. So you're going to get a real kick through the escapement on this Gyromax style free sprung balance. You can see that we have this lovely sort of crescent profile and then at center, the interaction of the secondary barrel bridge with the center bridge is quite handsome as the arc of one matches the swell of the other. And if you look carefully, you can see something that I consider to be just as important as sharp inward angles. There is a sharp outward angles where bevels meet in a blade-like point. And we have solarization on both barrel covers. We have nice anglage of a high grade, you can really see it well from this angle, mirrored, rounded, and handsome, undoubtedly started by mechanical means because that's the way it is at this price point, but finished handsomely, probably with a handheld uh, buffer tip on a drill bit style tool, but Patek always quite convincing that there is hand finishing present. That's not always the case with, say, JLC, Moser, and AP. Patek, you still feel like a human being was here. And yes, because this is a modern Patek caliber, the 65 hour power reserve manual wind movement does feature hacking seconds. Guaranteed accurate from the factory, no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. Okay. Now, I like to throw in some affordable watches in each one of these features. We look at dream watches, and some of them can be quite intimidating. Some of them can be prohibitively expensive. But when you're talking about pre-owned Breitling, most collectors will find that if they prioritize and make this a goal, they can make a Chronomat 44 happen. This Chronomat 44 features full satin, metal finishing with very few polished highlights, 44 millimeters in diameter, tone-on-tone -tone dial, Breitling in-house caliber B01, column wheel, vertical clutch, 70 hours of power reserve, certified chronometer, hacking seconds, quick set date, and you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it's big, but it's not too big. So if your wrist is my size or larger, game on. Now on the reverse, you can see this steel watch is water resistant down to 500 meters. So while Breitling chronomats are often discussed as pilot's watches, with its unidirectional rotating bezel, luminescent bezel pearl, running seconds, and 500 meter water resistance, you better believe that this is a diving chronograph. You could use it for pilot's functions, but I should also mention the action of this 120 click bezel is one of the finest I've experienced on any dive watch. It's both refined and precise. Take a look, the bezel pearl is huge. You can't miss it against the minute hand. And you can even see that the chrono seconds hand is loomed, which means you know the watch is running in the dark. I think that's very important if you are using it as a diver. One feature that stands out is that the strap is a grade above what you'd expect on a pilot's watch. Normally, you would get calfskin with a contrasting stitch, whereas here, Breitling has given us this incredibly thick cut blue medium rectangular scale alligator leather strap. And I'm deeply 
equally enamored of that. It's both handsome and luxurious. The bezel is captive bezel construction. This is something primarily used by Breitling and Zinn. And so all these little screws are functional and they actually hold the bezel onto the case. So impact or abrasion cannot snap it off the way you can snap the bezel off a Rolex or Omega. So Breitling really robustly built watches. Sometimes when we water test these, we have to use an incompressible case setting on the water tester because these cases are so robust they don't want to compress even under considerable stress and strain. So they need their own testing setting. A very impressive stuff for the money. Really, for any price. Now, if you want a diver, you got other options. I think that if you want to go outside the Swiss luxury big three of Omega, Breitling, and Rolex, one of the best places to look for a diver is Ulysse Norden because their divers are derivative of nothing. They don't look like tags or Rolexes or Breitlings or Omegas. What we've got right here is a Diver X, and this model right here was a limited edition. Came out in 2022, 175 pieces, and it's a combination of a titanium DLC case with a bezel that features a carbonium or carbon fiber bezel insert. Now, the bezel action here is superb. Louder and chunkier than the Breitling. We'll do a loom shot right here. And you can see that also is very different. The bezel is fully calibrated and fully loomed, so it's easy to read it at a glance and also read it precisely beyond the first couple of minutes. You don't have to approximate here. You know how many minutes are elapsed during your dive. I'm taking a quick look. You can see we have a little polymer or kind of a hardened rubber set of crown guards. The watch is 200 meters water resistant. It does have a screw down crown. The movement was originally developed for the Blast series. This is the automatic winding and three-dimensionally quite expressive. Ulysse Nardin caliber 372. So this is a manufacturer movement. You can see it has this large X over the center. This is the Diver X series. We have the barrel up at the top. Drivetrain runs towards the escapement and the balance at the bottom through its Sigatex uh, subsidiary. Since 2006, Ulysse Norden has made its own silicon. It's the smallest outfit in Switzerland that can actually manufacture this material for its own use. So we have a free-sprung balance made of silicon with white gold variable inertia masses. The hairspring is anti-magnetic silicon. The escapement is unlubricated and anti-magnetic silicon. This watch very shock-resistant, anti-magnetic, water-resistant. We have a Keyless Works featuring both polish and satination. The Keyless Works is responsible for setting and winding. Flip it all over. You can see the rotor winding system. And then also there is a, let me show you this to good effect. There's a little Paul based magic lever winding system right here. And of course it is fully skeletonized. We have ceramic rotor bearings for high efficiency and minimal maintenance requirements and a cool media blasted texture on the lower bridges. A really cool watch with ceramic hybrid sort of strap bracelet. This is something unique to Ulysse Norden. This is a ceramic component. So you can see how it's double jointed there to make this large watch wear smaller. 44 millimeters in diameter, but very light due to the fact that it's made all of carbon, titanium, and sapphire. And it fits well on my wrist. I really think if your wrist is 15 centimeters circumference and up, you're going to find this wears really well. The only feature it doesn't have that I wish it had is hacking seconds, but everything else about it is so compelling, including the brand behind it. Newly independent, by the way. I think this is a great way to get into a diver. This was over $22,000 new, making it a great pre-owned buy. Now, Ulysse Norden, again, purchased back from the Caring Group by Ulysse Norden's ownership and now run by owner and proprietors. Uh, they are going to rebuild the company as an avant-garde high horology offering with fewer than 10,000 watches a year, of which 1,000 will be the Freak. The Freak's going to be the new face of the brand. And, of course, back in 2019, they launched the Freak X, which you see right here. It was the first Freak with a crown, which was a little bit controversial, but it's been a huge hit on the market. It's also an easier version of the Freak to wear, being only about 14 millimeters thick and fairly short across the wrist. And what you're looking at here is a combination of titanium and sound sapphire and ceramic. So a lot of very lightweight materials. The sapphire in particular is one of the most dramatically boxed I've ever encountered. 
And just to remind you that this is something special, it has a marine chronometer style individual numbering plate on the side. The watch includes a rotor winding system. This is not the grinder, this is a magic lever type system. And you can see the pawls right there in the pawl wheel, but it gives the carousel tourbillon system a three day power reserve. Now about that, once again, as with the Diver X, you do have a free sprung silicon and white gold proprietary balance wheel with a silicon hairspring with an unlubricated full ceramic escapement. So this is all designed for long life in between service and also anti-magnetism. can be set very precisely. And you see you least start in very thoughtfully using a combination of silver and blue on this dial and going with clear sapphires for the pivot jewels rather than synthetic ruby. It looks better that way. Now this is a carousel, meaning that the whole of the escapement rotates but the balance wheel itself is, is not turning independently with its escapement. You've got rather a sort of baguette movement that acts as the minute hand. And because you have a different drivetrain for the carriage and the escapement, I'm not crashing the escapement as I turn it. And that is why a carousel was selected rather than a conventional tourbillon, because with a tourbillon, there's one drivetrain for the escapement and the carriage. Now this is actually a fairly well-loomed watch. So here's your hour hand. Here's your minute hand. When I turn the light off, it's even a little bit more apparent how you tell time with this watch. It comes with a full matching titanium clasp, and you can see the strap, a hybrid of leather and rubber. Throw it on the wrist, it's 43 millimeters in diameter. It's much more wearable than the other freaks. And I think ergonomically, that's, that's the best argument for this watch. Ergonomically, it is the best fitting freak ever made and a real cool way to get into Ulysses Norden ownership. I think a lot of people would acknowledge that if you're gonna get UN, get an enamel dial, get a freak, maybe get one of the marine chronometer style watches, a Sonata or one of the GMT plus minus perpetuals. This is core heart and soul Ulysse Nardin. All right, I got two sports watches for you. One hails from the fatherland. This is the Zen T1. So it is a titanium version of the long running and signature U1. It's 44 millimeters in diameter. It's actually like 44.5. So it's a 45 effectively. And then it's 12.7 millimeters thick as I measure it, which is quite good for a watch rated to 1000 meters. It has a couple of proprietary Zen technologies. First, you could see that we have a captive bezel, just like the Breitling earlier, the screws, fix the bezel to the case. Also, the bezel is incredibly smooth and rolls on bearings, which means the action is exceptionally precise and mechanical. Line it up with the minute hand. Now you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer. The bezel is made of tegumented titanium, so carbon diffused titanium. It's over 1200 Vickers hard on its surface, which allows it to resist scratches and scuffs quite well. You'll also note this little aperture down at the base of the dial, and it notes AR right there. Once upon a time, this system worked with argon. Today, it's actually a nitrogen fill to displace all moisture, dust, and impurities from the case. And then there's a copper sulfate capsule that will pull any moisture that manages to get in out of the atmosphere, the micro atmosphere within the watch. And when it's like this, white or very light blue, the copper sulfate capsule is brand new. As it gathers more moisture out of the watch, it will turn darker blue, and that's when you know to swap it. Also, this watch is able to withstand temperatures as high as 80 degrees Celsius and as low as negative 40 degrees Celsius. You could see all made of titanium, very light. Zinn has an overbuilt bracelet that uses hex screws instead of flatheads because it's harder to strip those out. Pop open the clasp. which is probably easier to do with my right hand here. And then you can see inside the clasp, we have a rather robust fold-out dive extension with thick swing arm and several different divots inside the clasp so you can fine-tune the fit by changing the anchoring point of the bracelet inside the clasp. So we'll do a wrist shot here. You can tell this watch is a mission timer. 
Einsatzzeit Messer. So this is part of the Easy M series, meaning it is designed for timing missions. And maybe that's a little bit of a dramatic way to describe your dive, but that is exactly how this works. And because it's more of a cushion case than a round case, it wears quite well even on a smaller wrist. And I'm not one to typically say a 45 millimeter case wears well on my wrist, but yeah, this is completely viable. And being titanium, it's very light. Inside, it's got a Soprod A10, so automatic winding with a quick set and hacking seconds, plus a 42-hour power reserve. You can see the luminescent, outstanding. The minute hand and the bezel pearl are different from the rest of the dial, so you can quickly reference them in relation to each other. And then the seconds hand is luminescent, so you know whether your mission timer is running in the dark and in the depths. That is quite important. So that is titanium grade five. You can see it says so on the back. And then on the bezel, titanium grade five and tegmented. Now here's a watch that offers even more scratch resistance. Launched in 2020, this is the Hublot B Spirit of Big Bang Mecha 10. Now you look at the case and yes, Richard Mille, that's what they're going for. Just as the original Big Bang was a riff on the Royal Oak Offshore style, this is a riff on Richard Mille. But I will say this, Hublot at least has the integrity to make the watches themselves RMs, uh, they make some of the watches, but the cases come from Valjean, the movements come from Vauche, the modules come from Dubois de Praz, the really high-end Richard Mules are made by Audemars Piguet, Renault et Papy. Hublot's making its own watch here. And you can see black ceramic, highly scratch resistant. You can also appreciate that the watch features a dial that is one and the same as the movement. So we have a quick release system for the strap. You just press down on the button, just like a car seat belt buckle. It pops right off. No need to ask your Richard Meal watchmaker to swap the strap for you. And Hublot, being Hublot, they have a universe of strap options available. Got a full folding clasp on the back. This is manufacturer caliber 1233. Manual wind with two mainspring barrels, and you can see they're open barrels to let you see the springs. This is a 10-day power reserve, and you can see the punched-out aesthetic, the rails and the punch-outs of the bridges, designed to evoke Meccano. Meccano, internationally, or as they call it in the United States, a rector set, is a construction toy for technically inclined children. And so this takes you back to your childhood with that look. Now we have a unique rack and pinion system driving the power reserve. You can see how there's a takeoff. And then let me move the hands out of the way here. We have a power reserve indicator for the 10 day power reserve that will turn red when you get down to the last 48 hours of power reserve. And you can see, although it takes quite a few turns, as I wind, less and less of that power reserve is red. So 10 days of autonomy, you could see the escapement and the balance from the dial side, which gives you 90% of the fun of a tourbillon, which after all is really all about seeing the escapement on the dial side of your watch. And it is surprisingly well loomed, as you have no trouble whatsoever reading the time. They even loomed the seconds hand. And while it's big, take a look at the shape of the case back. It's designed to wrap around your wrist. So this watch is a gentle, giant. Uh, 45 millimeters across, it's 55 millimeters from lug to lug, but I could wear this watch comfortably. Now, this is probably the smallest wrist that could, but in terms of it fitting, yes, it fits. And always the best way to view a big watch on my wrist is to move out a little bit so you could see the rest of my arm and my hand in proportion. This absolutely fits. It doesn't fit under a cuff, but it's comfortable and it sits squarely, and I would have a lot of fun wearing this. And this is a well-made watch. If you hate scratches, this is for you. It's all surrounded and sapphire, plus you get the techno cool of the 1233 twin barrel 10 day caliber. A really fun piece for Mublo. Well worth your attention, well worth your consideration. We're going to go in the opposite direction with something that is uber, this, this is just uber classical. This is the Blancpain Villeray Chronograph Flyback Pulsometre. It is a watch with a grand faux enamel dial, a 43.7 millimeter rose gold case, and then the exceptional 31.6 millimeter diameter Blancpain caliber F385. This is the same movement 
that you'll find in the bathyscaph flyback chronograph, albeit here it's finished differently. You can see the unique scalloped profile of the golden rotor. Here on this rotor, we have satination, we have scalloping, we have snailing. It's quite nicely decorated. The bridges feature truly impressive anglage. The balance is free sprung and dual anchored with a full bridge for shock resistance. We have a anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. On this movement, we have six position adjustment, not the chronometer standard of five, no, six. One better, and it does make a difference. A lot of chronometer manufacturers will hide all of the imprecision in the one untested position. Six position, you don't have that flexibility to hide the crap. You can see there's striping across the bridges, black polished screw heads, satination on the wheels. One of these wheels, a little nod to Blanc has a long running association with Automobili Lamborghini as this is an Aventador style wheel design. We have a column wheel for the chronograph. And yes, this chronograph is a vertical clutch meaning the chronograph starts without any jump or stagger. And if you like, you can just leave it running full time with no hazard to the movement. Again, an advantage of the vertical clutch. Column wheel feel here is exemplary. We do have a flyback action. Oops, pardon me, slipped in my hand right there. Flyback action, which allows you to reset and restart without first stopping the watch. Very handy if you're timing events that occur in rapid succession. It also has a stop seconds function, which is easier to actuate if you have fingernails, and I don't. So we have stop seconds, or hacking, to set the watch against a reference time, and we have a quick set for the date. Pulsometric scale, so you can use it to gauge the pulse of a patient. It says base 30, so the way you do this is you start the chronograph while counting the pulses, and you count until you get to 30 pulses registered. And for example, you count 30 right there. That means the pulse rate of the patient is 200. That's approaching tachycardia. You probably want to check that out. On the reverse side, one more note about this movement. Automatic winding with 50-hour power reserve. And like a Zenith El Primero, it has a beat rate of 36,000 vibrations per hour, so 5 hertz. One of the reasons why that chronograph seconds hand sweeps more smoothly than a conventional chrono. And this being a grand faux enamel dial, it is created from vitreous or glass-based paint with up to 20 firings at 800 degrees centigrade. During any of those 20 firings, it could crack, it could blister, it could explode. There's a high rejection rate in enameling. And as a result, it's considered to be a rare craft and makes watches equipped with true Grand Faux enamel dials very, very valuable. If not from a monetary sense, certainly from an artisanal standpoint, they're precious because they're difficult to achieve. We value the craft of the creator. I'm going to show you that watch one last time on my wrist, just so you get a good sense of its size. Remember, for a dress watch, this is large. This is 43.7. So if you want a dress watch that isn't petite or girly, I hate to use that term pejoratively, but some people think that way. This is a watch that's definitely big, and it's not bold the way Hublot is bold, almost as a euphemism for loud and proud. This is a watch that's simply largely sized and proportional to a bigger wrist. Now, this is also a fairly large watch, given that it is a dress watch. But the Ludovic Balois, upside down, represents an outstanding combination of artistry and ingenuity. Ludovic Balois, who came from Brittany, France, went to watchmaking school, found no work locally in watchmaking, so he became an aircraft repairman until the late 90s when he got a job at Franck Muller from about 1998 to 2001 with Franck Muller. He was a specialist in after sales with complications as his, as his focus. After that, he moved to FP Journe, and for about seven years, he was one of the most elite watchmakers for Journe, working on sonnerie watches and the most abstruse of complications, but principally the sonnerie souveraine, which was the grand sonnerie watch made by F.P. Journe. It would have been made, physically made, by Ludovic Balois. So in 2009, he struck out on his own, decided to create his own brand, and he was comfortable making just 12 to 24 watches a year, literally making every part of the watch, and the upside down is the watch he launched. Now this is 41 millimeters in diameter in platinum, 
and you can see that the dial is petrol blue. The design of the case is such that when you look at it, you can see how it's concave. Well, a concave lens, and this is a mirror-polished, optically smooth, concave mirror, it can reflect an image back upside down. So when you actually look at yourself in the side of the watch, your image will be upside down. The way this works is that we have a seconds hand, a minute hand, and then each hour is upside down until that hour is at hand. So you can see right now it is 11. I'll pull the crown out and demonstrate this. Make sure I get that there. Now it is 12.30. Now as I jump to 1 o'clock, you can see 1 jumps up. There's also a little dot index to make it easier to spot. And this is, in its way, a very elaborate jump hour. Now, not only is Ludovic Balwar a pedigreed veteran of Franck Muller and Jorn, but he also created the Harry Winston Opus 12, or pardon me, Opus 13, the Opus 13 using a variation on the unique Maltese cross jumping display found on this watch. So when you turn it all over, you can see a number of things. First, the movement is large. It fills out the case at 35 millimeters in diameter. The other thing you could see is that the case back engraving I, I mentioned every part of this watch is crafted by Ludovic Balwald. That's why some years he would make one watch a month. Well, these letters, these characters, these are all freehand engraved on the platinum case back. Now, you can see the core of this is a PESO 7001, but let's not fool ourselves here. A PESO 7001 is 23.3 millimeters in diameter, whereas this movement is 35. There's nothing left of the PESO caliber. Balwald makes all the parts. He just uses the train geometry from the barrel down to the escapement of the peso. So you could see everything is finished to a haut de gamme level with snailing across the outer architecture surrounding the Maltese crosses and then beveling a mile wide around every single one of the Maltese cross apertures as well as the surround framing the center. You could see the unique snail cam system. I'm going to de demonstrate now how this works. Make sure I'm doing this right here. It's a little bit tough to work with a gloved hand. I apologize. You could see how the snail cam and the jumper system works. And you can see that those parts are individually satinated across their tops and beveled on their edges. This is a masterpiece by a watchmaker at the absolute top of his game. 3 hertz beat rate has a 36 to 40 hour power reserve, so you'll need to wind it daily, but what a privilege to do so. And again, the rarity and the reputation of the maker creating a grail level watch that could easily be an exit watch for even the most accomplished collector. Now the lugs are fairly tightly downturned, so despite the fact that this is a 41, it wears quite easily on the wrist. Domed bezel, low profile, quite thin, but massive. You really feel the platinum, and I love that about this watch. So much to love about this watch, and if you love this or any of the watches you've just seen, reach out to us. Our email for pricing is tmasso at the1916company.com.